please welcome Mayor of Los Angeles, California, USA, Karen Bass, in conversation with staff writer at The Atlantic, Jerusalem Demsos. <laughs> All right, hello, hello everyone. Um, that was an appropriate song, I suppose, for what we're about to talk about, um, which is uh, homelessness, which has been a very core part of your administration and your campaign last year in Los Angeles, where it's been, of course, a really hot button issue. So when mayors and city councilors um, talk about homelessness, there's usually a real focus on getting people off the street um, who are already homeless. And that's been a focus of your administration. 14,000 people moved into shelters over the last year. Um, but you know, and over that same period, you still see rising rates of homelessness because even more people are falling into homelessness at the same time. So a 10% increase in homelessness in Los Angeles, even as you're making that progress at putting people into shelters. So what can be done to prevent homelessness? And why don't we see more focus on that from, from people, uh, um, from mayors across the country? Um, well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> First of all, it's, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and speak with everyone. And I have been a mayor now, let's see, I'm in my 10th month. So, so it's still brand new, because <laughs> prior to that, I worked down the street. But uh, let me just say that uh, we have to address this in a comprehensive manner. So when you talk about the 10% increase in homelessness, that was from last year. Mm -hmm. We won't know what, will be, what it will be this year, but let me just tell you that I'm very, very worried about an increase, as even as though we are trying to get as many people off the street as possible, because of the COVID protections and supports disappearing. So right now we have about 30,000 people facing eviction. Now it doesn't mean that all of those people will wind up unhoused, but clearly some of them will. So you have to have prevention in place. And uh, as mayor, I inherited two nonprofits and one uh, nonprofit called the Mayor's Fund, which is outside, it's a 501c3 outside of city government. I am focusing on prevention. We know the zip codes where the um, evictions are taking place. And so we are essentially funding grassroots organizations to reach out to those people to hopefully prevent them from being evicted. And uh, uh, we are developing a team of volunteer attorneys as well to represent them. So that's in terms of prevention. But uh, in Los Angeles City, we have 46,000 people who are unhoused on our streets, living in tent cities everywhere. And the reason why I ran is because I was worried that LA was at a crossroads where people were getting ready to take a very punitive approach because we've taxed ourselves three times and the problem just keeps getting worse. So uh, clearly the most important thing to do for me was to get folks out of tents. And by the way, I think one of the most important things that we've demonstrated, and I'm sure to many of you this is no surprise, but there is a myth that people don't want to leave the streets. And we have definitely dispelled that myth. People willingly leave the streets. No one wants to live in tents. So we've, uh, what we're doing, though, is we're uh, getting them off the streets and putting them in motels. And social service organizations are handling the, handling the population. But we'll take an encampment. We move everybody together. Because I think what a lot of people don't realize is that those encampments become little communities. Evictions are a, a key driver of folks getting into homelessness, and targeting those has been a, um, you know, a big topic within homelessness policy spaces. But a large number of people are very difficult to find. It's really hard to know which of the people who are vulnerable, who are very low income, who are struggling to find housing, are going to actually end up homeless, who will be able to find housing with a friend, who will be able to you know, crash in some other temporary situation after they lose their job. So what, what can even be done about this, you know, potentially even millions of people who are always kind of at the brink of maybe losing their housing? Like, What is the role of a mayor in trying to prevent that? Because as we've seen, even as people put really strong efforts um, into preventing folks from being evicted, into getting people off the streets, it's often a drop in the bucket of the number of folks who are in serious, um, you know, straits. Well, I mean, you, in a way, you can't predict who is going to fall into that situation. I mean, to me, the best indicator was somebody who's already facing eviction. But uh, Los Angeles is a city, our county has 88 cities in it. 
And so the county provides social services. They would be a little more, a, a little closer to the population because most of the services, obviously, are dealing with people who are low income. Uh, one of the things that uh, the history in LA, as I'm sure it is in a lot of where you are as well, is conflict between the city and the county. But uh, one of the things that I've tried to do in my very short time <laughs> is bring together all different levels of government. So we do have the city, the county, the state, and the feds now all on the same page. And that has been very helpful. That will allow us to, to better predict, but at the end of the day, we just have to be ready to, the minute somebody shows up on those streets, is get them off of the streets as soon as possible. And I think one of the things that has been missing is that in Housing First, which I believe, uh, obviously, in Housing First, but I would say Housing and Services First, and one of the things that I have found over these last few months is the service piece is woefully lacking. And there needs to be, thank you. There needs to be a fusion between housing, healthcare, basic primary care, and other forms of social services. And it is not okay to me to take somebody off the street, put them in a motel, and two weeks later have a social work visit. What I believe is there needs to be a basic standard, and that standard is the day you leave that tent, you get a full physical with labs and a meeting with your social worker so that you can identify what some of the drivers might have been uh, so that you could prevent, you know, we want the person to be in housing and you want it to last. The other thing that I think has been really lacking, at least in Los Angeles, is that we did not have a system of interim housing. So what that means is, is that you have to stay in that tent until we build. And I've expedited building through executive directives and blown past the, um, the uh, barriers, the bureaucracy. But I think it's unconscionable to say to somebody, stay in the tent. And by the way, I'll come back and find you in eight months. I hope you're in the same place. And then we'll offer you a room. We have to have a system of interim housing. And interim, by the way, I think means like a year, a year and a half. So having motels is too expensive. But now we're moving into purchasing motels, but also doing multi-year master leasing so that we lease out the whole motel. We're going to look for other innovative ways of, of housing, too. But, but we have to have a system of interim so we can really end street homelessness. So you mentioned the uh, emergency declaration you created in order to speed up uh, the approvals and creation of both shelters and affordable housing. Um, there is a lawsuit now from a you know local group that is attempting to um, you know stop your ability to actually use those expedited processes, and this is something that a lot of you know cities face. I mean, Los Angeles, you have overwhelmingly voters choose to you know raise money in order to build supportive housing, very popular measure a few years ago, 2015 or something, Prop Triple H. And yet at the same time, you often see groups like this, which are local groups, they're nonprofits, um, that often represents a small number of people who have concerns about um, maybe potentially due process, or they themselves don't like where the siting of different affordable housing is going to be, or they want control over that process. Yeah. And you see that often has an ability to stimmy government action. And if successful, I mean, there's a city councilwoman who says it may stop your ability to continue getting people into shelter beds. I don't think it's going to stop it. You don't think so? No. <laughs> Why <don't>. not? <laughs> I do not. Because if, if this, if I the, do if not. If it's successful, it won't well, stop Well, I mean, it. if it's successful. But first of all, we're going to fight it. But second of all, there is overwhelming opinion to solve this problem. And for somebody trying to stop me from saving people. We, 2,000 people died in LA last year on the streets. 2,000. 50 died in the first six months of this year on our public transit. People are fed up and tired of encampments. If we don't move these encampments, people are going to have a very negative reaction that will be punitive. And we're all facing the Supreme Court decision that could allow for basically the massive removement of people, and that's never a good thing. You know, you're also dealing with all the disparities in terms of the homeless population. In LA, African Americans are 8% of the city and 30% of the folks unhoused, 44% of Latino. 
So you're talking 74%. So you're dealing with all of that disproportionality at the same time. Um, but what I have found is overwhelming support in the city for the direction that we're going. I'm not going to let a lawsuit stop me from literally preventing people from dying on the street. I think one thing, though, that mayors have struggled with is that even when there is this overwhelming support, and often, you know, we'll, we will hear, um, you know, what gets magnified is the worst things that people will say. But in my reporting across the country, most people really do have a really strong urge and sympathy for That's the people right. who are on the streets. That's right. Um, but yet, it only takes a few people to hire a lawyer. So what sorts of things and changes can be made in order to not allow these sorts of things to delay it? Because, you know... Well, I mean, I can hire lawyers too. <laughs> so, I, you know, but, but I, I, another piece of good news is that you typically are dealing with the NIMBY situation, not in my backyard. But I am finding, even in LA, people are willing to have housing in their neighborhoods now. The difference is, and see, and I'm being criticized for this, but you know, we, none of us are con that concerned about that, but you know, because I'm not railroading neighborhoods. So I believe that you can do the housing all around the city, but you do it with the neighborhood. So we have one affluent neighborhood that does not want housing built in the residential area, but they said build in the commercial corridors where we have these underutilized outdoor shopping malls. And to me, that's a fine compromise. They're not saying don't build it at all. They just want to participate where the building is built. The other thing that I'm doing is, is creating an interfaith alliance because I really believe this is a moral issue and it has to be raised and fought like that. So that I want it to be that somebody would be embarrassed to say, you know, I think that person should just be put away, you know, in, in a negative way. Mm -hmm. You gotta create that sentiment and I think that that is gonna be helpful in allowing us to move forward and not be hindered by lawsuits. Do you see um, a tension in the amount of time it often can take to get a community on board with some amount of housing and the fact that you're, you know, you've, you've created an emergency declaration which indicates that you feel like this is a crisis right, right now, that this is something where we really need to move quickly. That's why you have said we need to expedite some of these processes, which were historically ways that these neighborhoods were able to lodge their disapproval. Right. And so we're, do you see a tension in between, okay, yes, we need to, of course, hear what people have to say, and if they're willing to have housing in certain areas and there's no cost to it, sure, but often we do see there's a cost. They want smaller apartments or they don't want apartments at all, or they want them along only along you know, highways, which we know often means that lower income folks are being placed in housing that is near bad air quality uh, neighborhoods. But, so. I mean, you know, th th there's always that situation, but the example that I just gave uh, on the commercial corridor was a perfect example because it's not a highway. Mm -hmm. It's right in their neighborhood. It's ju it just doesn't disrupt the single family homes, which is kind of characterized. LA is sprawl, and uh, the overall character of the city are single family homes. You can do both. And I think 10 years ago, there would have been far more resistance. But with 46,000 people, and by the way, if you count our county, it's 70,000 people. That's a massive number of people. And I think because of that, people are now willing to do things that they weren't willing to do before. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's important that we work with neighborhoods. I mean, I you know, started a grassroots organization 30 years ago because we were fighting negative land uses in South Central LA. You know, nobody had problems building liquor stores or you know, other things that I felt were magnets for crime. So I've been on the other side of that. And I believe that you can work with neighborhoods and you can have a resolution. People are not saying things like only put housing in the industrial areas. So I'm way more optimistic right now. And I find that there is a sentiment and a desire in our city, but I'm telling you our city was at a crossroads and it wasn't necessarily gonna go in a positive direction. But people see encampments disappearing. That is giving them hope that there's actually a resolution to this problem. Well, thank you very much. That's all the time we have. So let's give the mayor a round of applause. Mm -hmm.